Hey, I'm Clint Garrett, Ace Networker, and I've been asked the question many times, what is a managed switch and what does that mean? What does manage mean? And it's important to know what that means when you're first starting out in computer networking because it's one of the most pivotal aspects of being a network technician, a network admin, or a network engineer. This video is to continue in our series on networking switches and switching for what you need to know to pass the Network Plus and possibly CCNA, CCNP exam. So if you haven't already, make sure to click the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified when the next video is posted here. And make sure to watch all the other videos in this series where we cover all the different aspects of layer two switches. Are you ready? So what is a managed switch? In this short video, I'm going to show you the difference between an unmanaged switch versus managed switch and why this is something that will be an everyday common thing for you as you get into a networking career or business. When we use the word managed, we're talking about exactly that. You manage or control it. This management is typically done remotely. In other words, not right there physically with the switch hardware. Therefore, when you manage a switch, you can change or alter the configuration either remotely or when the switch is physically nearby. And the fact that you can change the configuration and settings on a switch is ultimately what defines it as a managed switch. An unmanaged switch is a layer two switch hardware component that's usually plug and play. You cannot change the configuration on it or alter how it handles traffic coming and going through it. In other words, you can't change the VLAN configuration on it. You can't change the, and in fact, most unmanaged switches don't really have VLANs, but you can't change the way it handles traffic. Does it prioritize certain types of traffic over other types of traffic? Can it block certain types of traffic? That type of thing. Those type of configuration changes cannot be made on an unmanaged switch. It does simple layer two switching and it's just connected on the network and powered on. So I wanted to go down most of the primary differences that you'll find between a managed switch and an unmanaged switch. So if you look at an unmanaged switch here, it's going to have a fixed configuration, which is what I just talked about. It's not changeable. You can't change the configuration on it. It doesn't support any configuration interface or any options for interfacing with it because it's not a managed switch. It's an unmanaged switch. You'll also find on an unmanaged switch that it is typically plug and play with limited configuration like default, QoS settings. Now QoS stands for quality of service and we're going to get into that in later videos also. But you don't need to know that for necessarily for Network Plus. And you'll also find that an unmanaged switch is really not very good in most situations. You're not going to have any security on it other than the the accessories such as a lockable port cover. And that's kind of physical security on it if somebody's physically nearby the actual component. But it's not going to allow you to secure it against being accessed or vulnerable over a network connection or the connections that you have on it. You'll also find that an unmanaged switch is very small in size. It's used on smaller networks typically. It's typically found on a, a small business or a small size business network or in a home or in a lab or in a conference room, that type of thing. So whereas you have those limitations on an unmanaged switch, on a managed switch, you're going to find things that you can alter and tweak the way you want to. Things like dynamic ARP inspection, IPv4 DHCP snooping, QoS, which stands for quality of service, SNMP, VLAN configuration, CLI interfaces, CLI changes and uh, commands that you can give it, IP routing on some layer two or layer three switches, port mirroring, redundancy. You're going to find all of these things, these features that are available on a managed switch. As far as performance on a managed switch, a managed switch can have its control configured over access control over land traffic. You can have priority uh, SNMP. You can allow for remote troubleshooting of your network through that switch and through the management of that switch, that type of thing. As far as security on, an, on a managed switch, you can have priority uh, SNMP. You can have allow remote troubleshooting in the network over a managed switch. So those are some of the performance aspects that you will get over a managed switch compared to an unmanaged switch. And as far as security, you can make a managed switch is very good with security typically. You can provide protection of your data plane, your control plane, and your management plane on a managed switch because you can control access to it in the configuration settings. And as far as places where you will typically see a managed switch, you're going to see that on the larger size networks like in data centers or large size 
enterprise enterprise type networks. Now, if you haven't watched it, be sure to check out this video on how to set up a network switch and router because in this video I go into detail on the different ways to access configuration settings on a managed switch. The easiest way to remember the how and why on a managed switch is to keep in mind that even a switch is like a hardware or in some cases a software version of a standalone computer or PC and that standalone computer has a specific task on your network to determine where traffic arriving on a port of ports needs to be sent. In other words what port of ports it needs to be sent out or what needs to be done with it before it's sent out. Now looking at it this way it will also need a primary IP address assigned to it just like a PC would on your network and that's either statically or dynamically by a DHCP server and that IP address which is known as the primary IP address on a switch will allow remote management of that switch over the network. I'm also going to get into what's known as out of band management on layer 2 switches. Now when you get into out of band management you don't necessarily need a management IP on a switch. Now in some cases that depends on the manufacturer but in most cases you're going to find that with layer 2 switches and we're going to talk about this out of band management in, in a later video but for now and again for the network plus certification exam just remember that a managed switch is one that allows the one controlling or running the network which is probably going to be you, to make those changes to its configuration and settings. And an unmanaged switch is unchangeable and only performs basic switching functions. Now, you can think of it kind of like a smart hub. It doesn't work like a hub. A an actual switch, an unmanaged switch, is not going to work like a hub, but it's going to be very similar in that you cannot make any changes to it. You just plug it in and connect it, and it, whatever the settings are on it, however it is designed to handle traffic, that's exactly what it's going to do. So this begins to wrap up our series on Layer 2 switches on computer networks. If you haven't checked out the other videos in this series, again, make sure you do that. I'm Clint Garrett, Ace Networker, and I'll see you on the next video.